In this video, I'll walk you through how to easily accept payments on your WordPress website. And we'll cover it where you don't have to set up a full-blown e-commerce store. This is perfect if you're simply accepting credit card payments from clients, or if you're selling one-off items on your website, this will walk you through that whole process. Hey there, I'm Christina with WP Beginner, where we teach all about WordPress so you can grow your website and reach your audience. If you find value in this video, go ahead and hit the like button. It really does help out. And all the links I talk about, you can find in the description below. So let's dive in. One of the easiest ways to accept payment on your site is by installing something called WP Forms. It's the easiest to use drag and drop form builder for your website. And if you're a small business, you probably already have at least the light version. If you don't, you want to head over to WP Forms forward slash WP Beginner. And you know you're in the right place when you see this little item here. To use the payments add-on, you'll need to use the pro or higher. And once you get set up with an account, you can log in. Once you head over to downloads to download the plugin. While we're here, let's go ahead and copy our license key as well. And then let's head back over to our WordPress dashboard. From here, we want to go to plugins, add new. And instead of searching for the plugin like we normally do, let's go ahead and upload the plugin. You can either choose file and look for it on your desktop. Or if you have it down here, you can left click, drag it up. Go ahead and install it and you'll wanna stick around to activate the plugin as well. Great, now that's activated, you wanna come over to the left under WP Forms, and let's go to Settings so we can add our license key there. And then from here, we can just paste in our license key and go ahead and verify that everything looks good. Great, now that everything is verified, we need to set it up to connect to Stripe. So you should already have a Stripe account. If you don't have a Stripe account, it's really easy to set up. It takes maybe 20 minutes to do that for your business. And then once you do that, you can come over to add-ons area and we're looking for the Stripe add-on. Now, if you don't like Stripe or if you wanna look for another add-on to use, then they also use authorize.net. So if you have authorize.net payment processor, then you can use that. They also have PayPal if you want to use that one. Once you install it, then I'll also activate the plugin for you. So now we're good to go. Great, now that we've added the add-on, now we need to connect it to our Stripe account so we can start accepting payments. So let's go back over to settings and we need to go to the payments tab up here. You see that it's not connected, so we need to go ahead and connect it. Easiest way to connect it is to simply click the connection button. It will ask for your information to connect. Once it connects everything, then we'll be redirected to our website where we can finish everything up. Now you see it's in live mode. If you want to test it in test mode, then you can do that. I'm gonna do it in test mode so that I can show you the whole process. Once you do do it in test mode, you have to connect with Stripe again. With test mode, you can test throughout the whole process. So you can submit a form, see how it goes to make sure everything is working properly. And then once you're done testing, then you can switch it back to live. So let's save settings and then we can go on to the next step. Okay, now that that is connected, we just need to create the order form. So let's go over to add new and this will allow us to create a new order form for us. You can give it a name. And by default, you have all of these to choose from. If you want several others to choose from, you can download the form templates pack add-on, and this will give you hundreds more form templates to choose from. But for this one, it's gonna be a simple order form, so I'm just gonna use this one. You see it's reminding you, we need to go ahead and, and make sure that we do the payments tab to configure the payment, we will do that. But first, let's go ahead and set up our order form. So with this, it's the name that we want, the email, phone number if we need that. I am doing online services, so I don't need, also don't need the address, so I'm gonna remove that. And all of that looks good. We like that we have available items for them to choose from, but I wanna change this. And since this is like an outdoor adventure, we're going to do some kind of backpacking trip. And then we have the total amount. So whenever they choose one of these, then it will add that up. So that's perfect. We can even keep the comment or message. We want to hear from them. What else do they want from this? But all of that looks good. The other thing we need to do is we need to go back to all fields and we're gonna scroll down and then these are all of the payment fields. So we need to do Stripe credit card so we can accept it. I'm gonna put it right under the total amount and then that looks good. We can click on this and we don't need to say Stripe credit card. We can just say enter your credit card. That's looking pretty good. I also want to change my submit button. So I'm gonna click on submit and this is the form name. Scroll down the button text. We just wanna say order now and sending that's fine. You also want to enable Ajax form submission. This just allows you to submit the form without it reloading the page. So that'd be very confusing. So, so that looks good there. Need to do a couple of other things. We want to set up payments. So let's go ahead and do that. We have the Stripe here. 
go ahead and enable it. You need to give it the payment description. Who's going to get the email receipt? You want the person who's submitting it with their email to get it. You can use that. You could set this up as a uh, recurring submission. So if you did this every week or what have you, you can do that. You can also give it a name if you wanted to do that and select the recurring amount there. I'm just doing this for a backpack trip. So that's good there. The other thing we want to do is go back to settings. We want to set up our notifications. So the notifications are the emails that get sent. By default, this pulls in the admin email of the WordPress website, so you can change this. You can even hard code it, meaning add your actual email in here. And you can also separate it by commas, and you can also do show smart tags. You can change the email subject. I like to do something like new order and then colon and then maybe add something specific by showing smart tags. Smart tags are the items that come in from the form. So let's bring in their name. So basically it'd be new order and then their name. That way it's different every time. It doesn't say the same thing and get you confused. And then you can change all this up and then it'll bring in all of the fields down here. And then if you wanted to, you could also just enable this for Stripe completed payments. So in other words, this you won't get the email unless Stripe completes the payment. If you select this, you'll see that it says heads up. You're only going to get it for completed payments. So in other words, if they if somebody tries to submit a payment or submit this and the Stripe payment didn't go through, then you won't see that. So maybe you want to set up a couple of them. Great. Now we want to head over to confirmations and confirmation is when they submit the form. This is what they'll see. You can choose from a message that will just show up and this is what the message will say. You can even get a little bit fancier and actually show a particular page, maybe a specific thank you page, which will tell them the next steps that they need to do, or maybe a success page where you have, if it's a digital download where it has the download. But for this one, we're just going to keep it simple and just say, thanks for your order. We'll be in touch shortly. So all of that looks good. We can go ahead and save everything. And now we've created the order, but now we need to put it on the website. So let's go ahead and click embed. And from here it's saying, do you want to do it on an existing page or do you want to create a new page? If you're just starting out, you probably want to create a new page because I'm pretty sure I already have one. I can add it to an existing page. So I'm going to put it under my services page and it'll take me to that page so I can add this here. Great. And it even tells you that you can add a block. We'll do that. So we need to decide where we want it to go. I think I'm going to do somewhere here. I'm going to click on the little plus icon. I'm going to search for WP forms. This is the one I want. Then I need to select the form that we just created. So it's the order form. And then it'll automatically pull that in, which is perfect. So now I can save this or update it in my case. And now when we preview it, we can scroll down and see this is it. Now, this is what's great about using the test form is you can actually go through and test it out. So let's just see it. And you can test it out with Stripe. There are several different numbers that you can do to test it. I know that the 4-2 numbers are good. Also want to do whatever month you want that's in the future. And then the CVC, whatever CVC number you want. And then the name on the card. And then when you click order now, it'll go through and then it'll scroll to the message. Then we can click order now. You see, thanks for your order. We'll be in touch shortly. So then when you go to Stripe to log in and you view the test data, then you see that that went through. So now we can go back and put it into live because we know everything is going to work. So to do that, if you've done what I did and you put it in test mode as well, we need, need to go back to WP Forms. We need to go back to Settings under Payments. We need to switch that from Test to Live. And now anything that gets submitted will be an actual payment. Now, if you're wanting to get something a little bit more robust, like say setting up a membership site, then make sure you watch this video next as I walk you through step-by-step -step on how to set up your own membership site in WordPress. And I'll see you over there.